Well, folks, I'm here again to talk about Crunch at CD Projekt Red, and I know I can already feel the dislikes coming. Last time I talked about this, people really, really did not like my video. It's at like a 69% like to dislike ratio, which is really, really bad for my channel, as you can see here. And I honestly uh, don't, don't think that people understood the gravity of the situation at CD Projekt Red as excuses were coming up. Uh, left and right because who cares about crunch? Why are we calling it crunch? Let's just call it what it is. It's overtime. Oh no, they have mandatory overtime. All of us deal with mandatory overtime, right? I have overtime that I do voluntarily sometimes with my YouTube channel. Uh, there are people that are in a lot of different career fields, warehousing, uh, you know, truck driving that are forced into mandatory overtime all the time. And because of COVID-19, mandatory OT has been just a super normal thing here in 2020. So who cares? They're forcing some mandatory overtime for a few months. Whatever. Who cares? And the reports are coming from, you know, a, a bunch of different um you know, industry people uh, in, in terms of uh, reporters. It's not coming from actual devs. Why aren't the actual devs speaking out if it's so terrible? After all, the labor laws out where CD Projekt Red is located, oh, they added an extra day on weekends, you know, mandatory or whatever. Uh, well, here's the thing. That means they can only work 48 hours because according to the labor laws, they can only work 48 hours a week in that country. That is the law. So why are we complaining? Most of us work over 48 hours. Well, folks, we now have an actual developer who finally broke silence, finally came out, and has been confirmed by independent uh, people, including, yes, Jason Schreier, I know some of you guys don't like him, uh, to be an actual developer at CD Projekt Red. We don't know who he is, and I hope he doesn't get discovered and fired for coming out about this. But holy crap, guys, this mandatory OT thing, that's just what they announced publicly. Um, they've been doing forced OT for two years. And uh, you thought 48 hours was bad? Try 112 per week. But before we get into this, I've got to remind you, we do have a couple giveaways going on. One is for a Nintendo Switch, a PlayStation 5, and an Xbox Series X. The other is for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Head down to the description to find out how to enter. You can like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, leave a comment, all that jazz. We're on our road to 100,000 subscribers. Also, be sure to go check out our Twitch channel where we are doing all of our live streams moving forward. We already will probably have another one coming up later today, or if not tomorrow. But hey, let's get into this story. So... This is coming right off of Reddit. So this is coming from Far Transportation 336 That is the username of this person on Reddit. And it says, Hi, CD Projekt developer here. Not only this conversation never happened, and this is in response to talking about, you know, conversations, you know, how CD Projekt Red is publicly saying, oh, we've had open conversations with our developers. Not only this conversation has never happened, but this is just last in a long list of very toxic behavior from the upper management toward towards us developers first of all i can confirm this conversation talking to developers if we're okay with crunch never happened if anything the developers have been crunching no stop since may of 2019 where the management was like oh shit we need to make the game. We must hurry. Mind that we were barely out of alpha at that point. And even though most developers pointed out that it was impossible to do the whole game from scratch, essentially, in one year, if anything, people have been dreading the inevitable two-year death march since long before the crunch started because they know it's just how CD Projekt rolls. Dick around in pre-production for ages and then rush everyone and work devs to the bone to make up for the time lost. And none of them was looking forward to it. We did ask, what's the plan if we can't deliver in the set deadline? And up until December, the answer from management was, we have to. There is no plan B. So here you go first year of crunch there. Of course, first a two month delay, and then another six months of delay. And to give a picture of how low the level of communication between the management and developers were, we found out both times on Twitter and other social media that the game was being delayed, with a mail from Adam, one of the uh, directors of the game, following a few hours later. Same happened with the gold release, and any other announcement made since June of 2019. 
People get riled up right now about crunch, but just so you know, many people have been spending the weekends in the office and doing 16 hours per day since June of 2019. Some departments even as far as a year earlier. So some since June of 2018 have been doing 16 hour days and weekends. Every time this was addressed, you'd get the usual copy-pasted spiel about we are fueled by passion, we are rebels, this is not for everyone, and other such copy-paste slogans. Which was a cool way to say, we have no idea what we are doing, but we have infinite cash and we can fix everything with more crunch. Conversations end up mostly like this, the management saying that everything is great and cool and we have to believe in the project, our questions and doubts being brushed aside. So what we learned from this is just eye-opening. And it's something that's been reported, but people are just ignoring. The actual ground-level developers that are doing a majority of the programming have no freaking clue. No clue what decisions are being made at the company. Because there is a hierarchy, right? You have, you have your, your producers and your, your uh, project leads, your developers, and then you have management, right? And from management to the actual developers because the managers generally aren't the ones doing the actual development they're the ones overseeing other people doing the development are the ones that are approving things like oh yeah we're, we're good with a delay oh yeah we crunch that's cool without even talking to their own employees that they're managing they make these decisions without talking to the actual people on the ground level making the game think about this we learn that some people have been working all weekends, and 16-hour days since June of 2018 with all developers doing it since June of 2019. Think about what we learn here. Oh, but they just recently announced Mandatory Crunch. They've been doing Mandatory Crunch for two years. They just didn't announce it publicly. When they talked last year to Jason Schreier and others and said, we are not going to have crunch with this game, ironically, they were already having crunch. They were already doing 16-hour days. And they just thought, they just hoped that not a single developer would speak up because nobody wants to lose their job. And yes, it's true. CD Projekt Red does reportedly, according to developers, compensate very, very well for this extra time that you're working. For this more than two times. I mean, we're not even talking double time. It's more than that because they're working weekends. The developers have not had a day off while working at CD Projekt Red since June of 2019. They haven't had one day off. One day. Not even one day. Not holidays, nothing. They haven't had a single day off. 16-hour work days. I'm sorry, folks. If you're going to sit here and tell me this is okay because all of us work overtime, no. 116 hours, zero days off for two to three years is unacceptable. I don't care what profession it is. I'm sorry. I, I can't sit here and take this anymore. The bullshit, the excuses people make. Oh, it's not CD Projekt Red's fault. It has to do with, with the uh, investors and them doing all these forced timelines. And this uh, Bullshit. This person just said that CD Projekt Red does this with every single game. The Witcher 1, Witcher 2, Witcher 3. They do this every single time. And people ignore these stories every single time because they think it's just, oh, people are just complaining. Look how good they have it because they dick around in pre-production. They could have got more work done in pre-production, but that's not how CD Projekt Red rolls. CD Projekt Red wastes a ton of developer time, actual regular working time, dicking around instead of properly managing the productions of their game, and then they force 90% of the actual making of the game to happen in the final two years. This game has been in development for, I believe, six years now. They, they, they've been working on it for six years. Four of those years, they barely got anything done. They dicked around. And then they make up for it on the back end by forcing 112-hour work weeks. This is insane, guys. I'm sorry. You can't be okay with this. I don't care how much OT you work at your job. I don't care if you push 80-hour weeks at your job, right? You're working 16-hour days, right? I don't care. You haven't, had, you haven't had a day off in three years. I don't give a shit. You ain't working 112 hours. If you are someone out there that's working 112 plus hours without a single day off for two years, go ahead and tell me I'm overreacting. And yes, there's going to be some developers that don't care about this. They don't care that their life is literally just work. Literally, it's work and sleep. Work and sleep. I mean, yeah, they have some food in there somewhere. It's work and sleep. 
There is, like, why do you think a public email went out, like a, a private email that leaked anyways, apologizing to developers, knowing that CD Projekt Red telling developers, we're sorry you haven't been able to spend any time with your family. Any time. This was sent out summer. This was sent out last summer. A private email leaked out from a developer showing that CD Projekt Red's management was apologizing to the employees for not getting to spend any time with their family. Any. We're not just talking about, oh, you know, you can't take vacations or, oh, you can't do this or, oh, you had to miss your son's birthday game. You couldn't see your family. Imagine for two years, if you are married and have a child, you can't see your family. Because you need to be dedicated to the game. Because we're fueled by passion. Because we are rebels. And this job isn't for everyone. This is the crap we're talking about. So when I brought up this initial story, and everyone was trying to make excuses for CD Projekt Red. Look at the labor laws. Look at the labor laws. Oh, it's just one extra day on the weekend. Look at the labor laws. They can't work more than 48 hours. Why are we bitching about overtime? This is insane. This is unhealthy. Mentally unhealthy. Physically this is not what people signed up for. And I got to give credit to Corey. Corey Bohm, one of our regulars. He's, he, he's a, a developer of sorts. doesn't make video games. But he, he, into programming and all that, right? I've had many conversations with him about workplace environment stuff uh, in privately. He responded to, to my tweet about this. And he said, the big takeaway is that so many young kids, young kids, a lot of you guys out there, young kids dream of making a career in video games, being a video game developer, you know, an art designer, etc. And they know they can burn through people that are dreaming about this at crazy rates as the next group is already lined up to take their place. So don't conform on overtime and crunch. You just get shown out faster. So what they're basically, what, what, what the takeaway here is, is that, hey, they know they can get away with this because you're going to make a shitload of money making this game in the final two years, and you're going to be burned the fuck out. You're not going to want to do it anymore. You might lose your wife. You might lose your kids. But hey, I made a shitload of money over two years. That's great. And now I quit because I don't want to keep living my life this way. That's okay. We have a whole new era in that time span of fresh people out of college, fresh developers to come in and take your place. And the cycle begins anew. And CD Projekt Red has been doing this with every game they have made. This is their development cycle. This is not an investor issue. This is not a, oh, the people feeding them money are... No. CD Projekt Red, basically, the guy said, it's like they have infinite money. They can just do whatever the fuck they want. And here they have no plan B. They dick around and don't get as much done in four years as they should. Oh, that's on the developers. No, that's on management. It's on management for mismanaging the project. You can't put it on the ground level grunt employees when they're pulling off basically creating maybe the greatest game ever made in a two-year span. When they've had six years this development could have been spread out. It could have been spread out over six years. And it would have been cheaper to do because they could have got more work done during pre-production than they actually did. But that's not how CD Projekt Red works. They're completely mismanaged. People need to stop giving this company an excuse because they make amazing video games. That's what it is. These the same excuses exist when Rockstar does 100 plus hour work weeks. Oh, it's Rockstar though. Who cares? Everyone knows that they sign up for Rockstar. No, they don't. No, they don't. Because they buy into the people saying, oh, it's not really that bad. It can't be that bad. If it was that bad, there'd be lawsuits. Guys, they're not just working double the legally allowed work time in that given country. They're working more than double, almost double, double and a half, two and a half times more. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. I feel bad for every CD Projekt Red employee that isn't a manager since this happens because of mismanagement. I'm not going to feel bad for the managers. Well, I feel bad for the people that create this problem. I feel bad for the people who actually are making the game, the ones that never get credit. Their names sometimes don't even appear in the credits. The people that do the real work. I am Nathaniel Rebel Jans from Nintendo Prime. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.